Well, it's getting well and truly autumnal here in North Yorkshire. It suddenly occurred to me the other day that I hadn't said a word on this channel about my move, despite all that preparation. But I've been here over four and a half months now. It doesn't seem like five minutes since I was surrounded by detritus and cardboard boxes and every manner of personal effect packed up ready to go. But I whittled everything down so that it would all fit in a three and a half ton Luton box van and we made our way out of Norfolk and up to the Yorkshire Dales National Park. Although I've lived in the Dales before, I had to make a conscious effort when driving to keep my eyes on the road because the countryside is frankly way too distracting. This is Wensley Dale, where I live now, and I seem to bring the sunshine with me. During June, we had nothing but bright sunny days and clear weather, and it was gorgeous. Four days after I arrived in the county, I turned 60, so I whisked myself off down to Hawes, which is about six miles from me, and treated myself to a very nice lunch at the creamery there. And once I'd got a little bit more settled, what was the first thing I did? Well, naturally I made for Harrogate, had a trip down memory lane and went to Betty's Tea Rooms. Here I am with my friend from next door, Sharon, and we decided to treat ourselves to afternoon tea. However, when we got there, we realized they were also open for lunch, as they are most days, I think. So we had lunch and then we had afternoon tea. Well, why not? You only live once. I also spent a bit of time reacquainting myself with the Dales generally and had a wonderful drive around Swale Dale and Buttertubs and all of those places. And of course, not long after I got up here, I was back helping out at Scargill again. I was lucky enough to be caretaker for the second Summerfest week. Those are the summer house party weeks they have for families. And one of the duties I took care of was to be the person in charge of the tuck shop. So I had to try and practice my inner curmudgeon. No, not really, I didn't. I was very nice to the kids. The three Summerfest weeks are extremely busy for the Scargill community. Everybody pitches in and helps with everything. There are all sorts of activities laid on for the youngsters. And on this particular week, I think we had about 39 children uh, on board so it was quite extraordinary. The Marsh Lounge continues its renovation process. I'd never seen the windows on top of the cladding removed but that's what they look like apparently. The process is well underway and I think mostly on schedule so should be complete sometime in November. I actually got to help out on the audio visual side of it this time which is right up my street because much of the equipment there. I have uh, some version of it at home as well. As I observed earlier on, the weather really has turned autumnal now. There's a definite nip in the air after dark, and so it was time to spark up the chimney on clear evenings out the back. It's absolutely lovely having this thing going. You can sit out there for hours on end just gazing into the sky and drinking cups of tea or whatever. And it doesn't half chuck out some heat too. Like many people, I do enjoy an open fire. Nothing quite like it. Because North Yorkshire has official dark sky status, you get very little light pollution and so it's absolutely perfect for the kind of thing I like doing which is sitting out late at night and just looking heavenwards. We're in a solar maximum at the moment which means that it's more likely than usual that we'll get the aurora borealis. 
I haven't yet succeeded in capturing the aurora on film or photograph, but I will do at some point. As you might expect, my main preoccupation since coming up here has been getting the house straight. Uh, in fact, I had to do so very quickly with regard to the office, or at least the desk and the computer, because I had a project arise exactly while I was moving. So I had to get stuck into that right away once I was here. For a long time, the arty crafty room was just a pile of boxes, but eventually I got that cleared out and the bench up and then everything else began to drop into shape. One of the key things actually was getting my music set up just so, because I wanted to carry on writing and also putting stuff out for people to listen to, so it's important to get that all up and running properly. I've been writing music quite prolifically since I arrived, which is nice. I've turned out, I think so far, about five pieces, something like that. At some point the idea hit me that it would be good to do a musical telling of the story of the 1883 eruption of Krakatoa Island. This subject has been fascinating to me ever since childhood really. I was taught, I think like everybody else at that time, that the island simply blew itself off the face of the earth and that lots of dust and so forth went into the atmosphere and caused brilliant sunsets for years afterwards. In actual fact, the truth is somewhat more alarming. There isn't complete scientific consensus on what happened because no one person saw the whole thing. But it's thought that at least two thirds of the island just subsided into the ocean, into the chasm underneath, which was the magma chamber and that that may have resulted in millions of tons of seawater pouring into them and being flashed into steam. Nevertheless, however it took place, there was catastrophic loss of human life and destruction of property. There have been various documentaries over the years about this disaster, but the only dramatization by mainstream cinema was this film in 1968. Krakatoa isn't east of Java, it's actually to the west of it, but the producers felt that east sounded more exotic, so they relocated it for the purposes of their film. Right, well, that's about it from me this time. I've got the third part of the Krakatoa suite yet to do. When it's complete, I'll put the whole thing up on the various streaming platforms so that you can download it if you want to. In the meantime, perhaps you'd consider checking out my second YouTube channel, just named after me, John Della. And I will look forward to seeing you on here next time. Take care.